All right, on the mages. So I'm going to give you an overview of mages. We're going to talk about all their skills. Then we're going to talk about fire, ice, hybrid, support, and auto mages. Then I'm going to give you some random mage knowledge. And then we're going to talk about dueling. So, let's get started. Mages are glass cannons by nature. And they have the lowest armor in the game, tied with druids, but druids can buff their armor at any time. So mages really have the least. They deal all elemental damage with their attack skills being fire and ice damage. They have the best offensive support spells, lore. They're generally mid-ranged. They, along with druids, can have the highest possible energy. Mages have the most amount of possible builds. And mage is the only class to have two skill abilities, being fire and ice magic. So here's all the skills. Firebolt does good fire damage. Firestorm does good fire damage, but with an AoE of 6 meters. Fire Tune will increase damage dealt by Firebolt and Firestorm for 3 minutes. Incinerate will deal fire damage over 20 seconds. Lure Fire will reduce the target's resistance to fire for a whole minute. Ice Charges will deal high ice damage. Ice Blast will do high ice damage with an AoE of 8 meters. Ice Tune will increase damage dealt by Ice Shards and Blast for 3 minutes. Frostbite does initial damage and then deals ice damage over time for 30 seconds. Lore of Ice will reduce resistance to ice for a minute. Energy Shield absorbs damage for 90 seconds or until it's broke. Energy Well will increase you or target's maximum energy for 5 minutes. Energy Boost will increase energy regen on you or a target for 45 seconds. Sacrifice will drain your health and heal the energy of you or a target. Bandage Wounds will heal you or an ally, and that's based on Vit and First Aid. Recuperate heals health over time out of combat, also Vit and First Aid. Meditate regenerates energy over time out of combat on Focus and First Aid. Double Attack deals twice the amount of damage up to level X. Fire Cloak will create a Fire Backlash on you or a target for 2 minutes. Freeze will freeze an enemy up to level X leaving them unable to move or attack for up to 15 seconds, which is less in duels, but will end before then if they're attacked. Lore of Assassins will reduce resistance to Pierce for a minute. Lore of Soldiers will reduce resistance to Slash for a minute. Lore of Giants will reduce resistance to Crush for a minute. And Lore of Magic will reduce Magic Resist for a minute. We're on Fire Mages now. Fire mages are built for damage per second over just damage. They're about twice as fast as ice mages, but with less damage per hit. As such, they'll consume more energy, even though their spells use less energy per cast, but will do more damage as time goes on. They're ideal for most situations, except dueling, locking lower health bosses, usually, and fighting bosses which are resistant to fire or weak to ice. Now here's some skills and how I rate them in being useful to a fire mage. Firebolt is the best skill because it's instant casting and it has a 6 second cooldown and that's real fast. Firestorm is close behind because it has a 2 second cast time with an AoE of 6 meters and a 15 second cooldown. Not as fast but still powerful. Lore of Fire. You're going to need that to deal good damage with fire in order to lower the resistance. Fire Tumint, it boosts both Firebolt and Firestorm, so you should love it and use it. Energy Shield, it's kind of situational, but I like it, because it allows you to put your health lower, because the shield will absorb the damage, and you can put more points in focus because of that. Lore of Assassins, it's the most commonly used melee damage, so if you want to help people out, that's a good one. Ice Shards, I know you probably won't have Ice Lore and you shouldn't as a Fire Mage, but it's a little something you could just throw out there for a little bit more damage. Energy Boost, it'll help you regain energy and it can negate the cost of using Elixirs to do so. Incinerate, it deals damage over 20 seconds but does less than a Fire Bolt. And it takes 20 seconds to do it. It's a crap skill. Cloak of Fire. It can help you deal a little bit more damage when you're leveling, but that's about it. 
sacrifice it trades you know health for energy but if you use gear for it like say a Rungner helmet or ancient beast bone helmet or something like that you can cheat the system and get a lot of energy for a little bit of health so it can be useful freeze is alright if you need to interrupt skills or install stuff like the priestess at Morty or something like that now we're going to talk about ice mages ice mages are built for raw power over speed it's not about the DPS, but the damage itself. You deal about 50% more damage, or about twice as slow as a fire mage. There's some perks to it though. If you have a slower system, you can manage your energy better. Even with the higher costs, because it uses less from attacking less as compared to fire. Ice mages also have a better start on a fight. Because of their burst damage, they do a lot of DPS with two hits, but then kind of trail off after that. So, ice is better for dueling, usually locking lower health bosses because of the burst damage. And they're good against fire resistant bosses and ice weak bosses. Now here's my ratings for ice mages. Ice shard, 1 second cast time, ice damage, and 15 second cooldown. Not bad. Ice blast has a 3 second cast time, ice damage. It's the highest ranged AoE in the entire game with 8 meters and has a 20 second cooldown. Lore of Ice, you're also going to need this for Ice, you know. Ice Attunement will boost your shards and blast. Energy Shield, you know, when you're Ice, you have more vulnerability because you're waiting for your skills to cast if you don't kill something in 2 hits. So it'll be more useful on this build. Firebolt can help close the openings and waiting for ice. More damage. Lore of Assassins for the same reason as before, you can help people out. Energy boost will save you more money. Don't really need it as ice, but it's helpful. Frostbite does initial damage and ticks for 30 seconds, but it does less damage than Ice Shard, and it's even longer than Incinerate, so it's really terrible. Sacrifice is also situational for the same reason. You can use gear boosts to make it effective. Freeze can also interrupt skills and stall bosses, you know. Also good for Ice if you need it. And funny enough, but building a Fire Mage or building an Ice Mage is basically the same thing. So let's talk about both of them. So why is focus good? Well, it increases the damage of spells. It's the only stat that increases damage for a caster mage. It increases energy. You don't really need the energy, it's just a bonus. Now let's talk about vitality. You get more health, 6.25 per point, but mages have really bad armor, so it's not that effective. And mages are ranged, they don't really have to deal with a lot of the class problems for melee or anything. Usually not an AoE range, but you can be sometimes, so maybe you might need it for that. But yeah, only use as much as you need to survive. Remember that talk about wasted potential I talked about in the previous video? That's what I mean. So on the hybrid... Hybrid mages are built for pure DPS, and they have very little downtime, if any. It's the highest DPS build, but also the most energy consuming one. They use both fire and ice attacks, so they have better coverage for resistant bosses, but they must use more skill points in order to do so. Hybrid mages are the best for DPS, but they're harder to make than the average ice or fire build. And here's my rating for them. Firebolt is the best DPS mage skill in the game, hands down. Ice Shards is the best ice DPS skill for mages. Firestorm is slower than Ice Shards, but it's still good. You're going to need Fire and Ice Slayer to cover both elements. I would highly suggest using Fire Attunement, because Hybrid's DPS based and Fire's DPS based. Ice Blast, it does high damage, but the 3 second cast time might kill you. So don't use it if it overlaps other skills. Because then that's wasted potential in DPS. Ice attunement, hybrid can mean ice, it's just not optimal. 
energy boost is actually viable with this build because you're really going to be burning your energy here and energy elixir might not even be enough so if it isn't use energy boost sacrifice more viable here than ever that's still not that good but you may find the use incinerate is still bad frostbite's even worse and I would not use Lord of Assassins or any other support lures because hybrid's about you. You want to be the DPS. Now here's some extra info about hybrids. Focus is even better because more energy actually means something as opposed to other builds. Optimally you should be fire, but if there's some ice gear laying around, it's not that bad to go down that route. Doc Gull gear is perfect for hybrids because it gives massive focus and both magic boosts while also giving huge buffs to the two most important hybrid skills, Firebolt and Ice Shard. Getting reduced cooldown gear for the three main skills will keep you basically casting forever, but you're going to need a way to offset the massive energy usage. On the support. Support mages aim to help the group over their own damage. Through their intervention, much more damage will occur than the mages can do themselves. There are some drawbacks to this though. Said mage can't deal any damage to level, fight lower end bosses, and stuff like that, unless they change their build. They must dedicate themselves to bossing. Also, only one lore can be in effect at a time, so two support mages won't do much good and is a waste of precious damage. Support mages are good for, well, support. So here's the skills and how I rate them for a support mage. Lore of Assassins is definitely the best because it's pierce damage, and that's what most classes use. Lore of Fire is the main elemental damage used by Fire Mages, EDL and DL armor for rogues and rangers, and some other gear. Lore of Magic is used by Druids, some Dokal gear, some other gear. Lore of Ice is used by Ice Mages and some gear. Lore of Giants is used by Blunt Warriors, some Warrior Skills, some high tier damage food. Horse mounts. Lore Soldiers is used by Sword Warriors, Axe Warriors, Low Tier Damage Food. And I should add that Lore Fire, Magic, and Ice will be pretty good for Protus. But I didn't really want to rate based on that because that's just one boss and it's situational. But maybe it's a support that you'd want to do that. Now, Firebolt, yes, this is support. But if you want to keep some damage, that's nice to have. Energy boost, you could use to help out druids or other people. Fire cloak, you might as well give it to the tank because he's getting hit a lot, so that can add up to some damage. Energy well, maybe. If you can find somebody who needs energy. I highly doubt it, but maybe. Energy shield, if you're getting hurt a lot for whatever reason. Sacrifice is free instant cast energy. It's okay. We're at Auto Mages now. Auto Mages were an important build in the early life of the game, but fell out of style fast. They're still extremely effective and overlooked, though. They use auto attacks in order to deal more damage while waiting for spells to cool down. The auto attacks are usually accompanied by lures to make the damage higher as well. An Auto Mage can be any type of mage build as auto mage just means your gear is set up for auto attacking. They're the best build early on by far. They are viable till end game at leveling. They have the strong weakness of a low attack due to mage gear not having any. So they're not good for high level bosses. So here's some fire auto mage skills and how I rate them. Definitely want lure of fire since autos are going to be your damage. You'll make them good. Firebolt you definitely want. Because instant cast is perfect to match with your auto attacks. Fire tune is great because it makes your spells stronger. Firestorm, it's pretty good at 2 second cast time. It'll interrupt your autos, but it's good at higher levels and your firestorm is stronger than your autos. Energy shield, I'd recommend it since you can't use the run tactic, you're going to take more damage, so you might as well be prepared for it. Fire cloak is pretty good for leveling. This will add more DPS for you. Double attack? It's pretty situational. It'll help you deal divine damage or not miss. But you're going to have to be in melee range to use it. 
Now here's some ice auto mage skills now I rate them. Definitely lore of ice, because you know, ice damage. Ice shards, not instant, but it's really strong. Ice tune, more damage, you want that. Energy shield, for the same reason, it'll help save you some damage. Ice blast, there's a 3 second cast time, it really interrupts your autos. But the damage can be really strong, and even early it can do. Double attack, it, it's usable, yeah. Frostbite, no, it's just terrible. Here's some additional info on the auto mage. So how do you want to choose an offhand for auto mage? Well, you want a Lux Elemental offhand in your type, like a Gold Blade of Ice, uh, you know, Freezing Axe of Triumph, Freezing Axe of Conquest, stuff like that. Brands are an exception for Fire Mages. Like the 300 damage level 90 brand is better than a 100 axe for fire in most cases. How do you want to choose a main hand for an auto mage? Well, attack speed is very important since it makes your auto damage occur faster. The damage of the main hand can be in a, you know, a player in this since EDL wands do crush damage and Aggie tridents are usable by mages. You might want to consider it. Weapon type's important, you're not going to get any attack or damage boost from no proficiency weapons like Aggie Tridents or Cruel Knives or anything. Range can be useful if you need it, like a Yule Staff and a Wand of Hollows is a really long range for wands, and that might save you from more damage than say punching an enemy in the face. Now how do you want to choose armor? Well I have a list here. Damage plus gear is great to help autos like damage helmets, earthstone, damage bracelets. Row case gloves will save you a ring slot, great armor, more DPS. Probably the best part you can have. Skill level, direct damage plus gear. Good for high spell damage to, you know, go good with the autos. Focus gear will help your lures and spells a little bit. Ice or Fire Magic will boost your chance to hit on the spells and damage very slightly. Armor value if you have decent health. Health if you don't. Some tips. Having a decent attack value is important for hitting stuff. Make sure your weapon ability is maxed or you have attack plus gear like a Radiant Earthstone BP or Helmet or something like that. Auto Mage damage isn't just limited to gear. Food is extremely overpowered for them if you have the right lore, some strength, and ability. And yeah, the food damage will go down if you use a low ability weapon. Like a wand or a dagger, there's a massive difference there if you use a Barabrith or something like that. And you can make use of some damage lux as an auto mage, like Backlash Charms, you know, Midnight Ami, or Wild Sun Stalker Amis for the really overpowered skill. Now how do you set up your stat points as an auto mage? Well, focus is still good. It improves your lures and spell damage, so that's nice. And you don't have to go strictly focus either. In fact, I'm telling you not to. So we're going to talk about why vitality is good. Since you don't need to be full focus, you can invest more in health, and you're going to need it too as a closer range fighter. And of all things, strength can actually be good as an auto mage. If you make use of physical damage as a main hand or food, it'll add some more damage for you. But I'd only really suggest that if you have a physical damage type in the first place, and you don't have enough strength for gear. So here's some random mage knowledge for you. The run tactic. There's no need for you to stand there and let the enemy hit you while you're waiting for your skills to recharge. Run back a little bit, but not too far, and you'll save some health if they're a melee fighter because they'll have to run to you in order to attack you. Equipment weight. Unneeded armor and weapons will reduce your maximum energy, so only use stuff that will benefit you. Novelty weapons. They're actually good as a mage. Brock weapons can give you a lot of damage early on. Snowbound candy canes are a real good one for ice mages. And Lux mounts are pretty good too. Yeah, I know that you can have a focus offhand at 100 or something like that, but the high regen proc and sometimes the skill 
are really nice to have. Novelty notes. You can't double attack with a novelty or use them with a battle mount even if it is one handed. Which Lux offhand is the best for mages? Well, focuses and grimoires are the best for casting damage, which usually makes it the best for bossing. Shields are great for countering the mage's paper armor issue. It greatly increases survivability and is the best for leveling and PvP, in my opinion. Elemental offhands are needed for auto mages to deal decent damage. <laughs> my favorite part. Why DL and EDL armor is terrible for mages? Well, it gives no direct skill damage, no focus, only magic and skill points. The armor is still bad, because the mage armor rating is bad overall. The ice and fire magic bonus is worse than the druid's nature magic bonus. The developers are probably like, oh, two abilities, that's too overpowered. We'll just make it lower. But when they forget that having two abilities makes the thing weaker in the first place. And, on top of that, most mages only use one element. The set bonus isn't appealing, divine damage is basically useless here, and the health bonus is like eh, because mages are gonna die fast anyway. It's still bad with the Morty Helm because there's no direct damage on it. The offhand is the only good part. The EDL wand is trash, the DL wand's even better, ironically. So only use DL or EDL if you have nothing else, or if you really need the skill points because they're not at 50 yet. But that's kind of on you if they're not 50. How to pick optimal gear for casters. Make sure your attack skills are at 50. If not, wear point gear. Use cooldown reduction gear if possible, because they'll increase your DPS. After that's settled, Use gear that's going to give you direct bonuses to skills. Then, use focus grinding gear for the damage mainly. And then when you have too much focus, use magic gear for more damage and hit chance. You know, like ice and fire magic, whichever one you are. Lastly, health gear is good for survivability or alting points in the focus. So let me tell you why RCT gear is better for fire, not ice. A lot of people get this one mixed up. RCT reduces cooldown, not cast time. And reducing 20 by 30% or 6 by 30% is still 30% either way. And fire has less cast time than ice does, so it gets more DPS from it. And I have my example of a 30% reduction below. And as you can see, fire bolt gets its 30%. But Ice Shards gets less than 30% because the cast time is still there. Now I'm not saying reduced cooldown is bad for Ice. It's actually really good. I'm just saying it's better for Fire. Now, under some circumstances, Ice is better. Like if you have internet problems. Because you're going to have to wait for the skills to cast. And that's going to kill the advantage Fire has. So ice is better in that situation. And singles are also better for ice mages because you're going to have to wait a long time for your skills to be ready anyway. So you could just wait there and get your single ticks from it. Don't be like me and worry about, oh my clan's going to see me doing nothing. Well it's actually more tactical to do nothing because you're regenerating your energy and not having to deal with that. So, for dueling, why would you pick mage? Well, it has the highest PvP damage, and therefore it gets quick kills. There's no bad matchups really, and warriors can be a pain, but you can beat them. They have energy shield, and they have freeze. Some problems with it though, they have the lowest armor in the game, high energy cost, the skills can be interrupted. It's ranged, which is good and bad. When you have ranged damage, the projectile has to hit the person to do the damage, so it's slightly more delayed. But ranged also means that you can get an advantage by running. So, double-edged sword. And their damage is reliant on lures. So here's some offense-based dueling advice. It's optimal from levels 119 
and 100 plus. Ice is optimal for 1 to 59 because of the royal ice rings, like Ice Blast and Ice Attunement. They don't have level requirements because they're the newer ones. Having one maxed attack skill is better than having two that aren't, because you're doing more damage in less time. Ice is usually best for PvP, because unless a fireball kills the enemy in one hit, the burst damage of ice is going to do more DPS. Fire might be better against tanks though, if the two ice hits can't handle it. And remember, this, this is a really important one, avoid dueling people who have more resist than your lore. Do the math before you duel them, or else they're going to do almost no damage. Some defensive based advice. High health or freeze is advised. Both of the good freeze mounts are level 100. If you want to know more about them, I have a video on them. Use the run tactic to reduce damage taken from melees. If you die too fast, consider using a high resistance bear helmet, like a 500 resist pierce helmet. If you can fit energy shield, use it to save more health. You should really consider using a shield over a focus because it really goes nice with the paper armor issue. And if you're lucky enough to have flights, they're great, especially the armor one. Now we're going to talk about the infamous mage dueling trick. The double energy shield special. It's usually looked down upon, but I justify it by saying the mage armor is terrible. That's my excuse, and you're free to use it. It allows you to use two energy shields in one duel. And it's not just for dueling, it has some practical use too. You can see in Rags to Riches that I use a double E shield to kill Luther solo. But let's talk about its dual usage. Energy shield lasts for 90 seconds, and the cooldown is 60 seconds. So you have about a 30 second window to do this. A dual request is good for 15 seconds, and a duel takes 10 seconds to start, so take that into account. And casting energy shield, it is interruptible, so try and cast the second one before the first one breaks, but you can play the risk of waiting until it does break for a little bit more extra health. And that concludes the mage section. Now, you may be wondering, why haven't I given out any builds? Well, I want to teach you guys how to make a mage. Because that's way more important than actually giving you a build. Because A, following a build would be hard because you'd have to find specific items. And B, if you copy a build, you're not really learning anything. It's just like when I try and teach people in FFEX about how to play. Well, Druid's next.